Thank you, man. We're all here, so we can just start recording. Let's go. Yeah, Rez, we've, we've all decided to just start doing self haircuts. Rez, turn yeah, side. Turn <laughs> side. Turn sideways, Rez. Give us a flash. <laughs> the wow. uh, the clipper the clippers died in the back. <laughs> it's not bad, dude. Thanks, man. Are you are you at that level yet, Austin? Are you like? Oh, bro, you, you don't even that? know what's going on right now, dude. I look like Lloyd Christmas over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I need to watch. What's up, TV, Austin? Man. What's up, Paul? What's up, bud? How you been? I'm good. I'm good. We're uh, probably living the same life as you right now. Yeah, right? it's pretty consistent across the board, huh? But you were just, just at you're, home with the kids. You were just saying though, you got you're down at your parents' place. You guys, are, you're able to uh, you're able to travel across uh, state borders. Over here, we can't even go into the next province. Oh, really? Hardcore then. Yeah. Yeah. Where are your parents? They live in uh, Northern California, Redding. Okay, yeah. It's like a two-hour drive. Nothing too crazy. Two-hour drive from where you are? Mm -hmm. he's, he's in Medford, Oregon, in right? Southern, yeah, Southern Oregon. So it's like okay. four hours south of Portland. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so man. when did you go there? We got in last night. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of here for Easter. Oh, right, right. I'm trying to live that quarantine stay-at-home life, you know? <laughs> but seeing your parents. Exactly. There you go. Just stay away from them. No, man. It's uh, we kind of came down for the kids too, because the cousins like they have a good time when they play together. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, Is it, or are the are the vibes over there? Like, what's the situation over there? Are people like being super serious about social distancing and all this, or is it a little more relaxed? Um, I think where we currently are living, it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, I mean, there's obviously we need to stay at home, but. They're letting us, you know, cruise to the grocery store. You know, we can kind of go out and get gas if we need it and some essential stuff. But yeah, we're we're closed, right? We're we're a lot, we're uh, at stay at home and we don't have uh, any classes going. We've basically just checked out gear, right? For our members that wanted to rent out some stuff and uh, doing some at home programs. So, like we've kind of stepped that up a little bit more and one of the couple zoom classes, like basically what most of their affiliates are doing, you know? Yeah. You guys at the grocery stores yet, you guys have the lines on the ground to separate people like six feet and all this. Yeah. They got little land markers. Okay. They got like this plexiglass, like in front of the cashier. Yeah. It's yeah like, we've got all that too. It's so weird, man. I mean, I don't crazy. know how you guys feel about it, but. Oh, it's just crazy. It's just like a awkward, it's just like a weird experience, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I think too, like you're going to get pros and cons with anything, yeah. you know, like it's definitely kind of a bummer deal not to be able to train with your buddies like face to face, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, kind of have your business sort of be turned upside down for sure, you know, in a matter of uh, a week or two. Exactly. Yeah. Let me, uh, but, let, me, you know, let, me let me introduce you a little bit here, Austin, before we get going. Yeah, yeah. Too deep totally. into this. So Austin Stack, level one seminar staff. Um, you went to the CrossFit Games in 2012? Yeah, buddy. Old school. Old school. Did you go? Yeah. Did you, was that the only year you went? It was the only year I made the, the Games, yes. I competed at regionals from 2011 through 2015. Cool. So, um, owner, yeah. of, owner of CrossFit Den? Yeah, CrossFit the Den. You have a partner or is it just you? It's just me. Cool. I kind of grew up, though, with like a partnership and then kind of we branched off. Yeah, and you're you're up in uh, in Medford, Oregon, so all the way on the west coast. Um, I know you played college football. Correct. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where you I guess you got your uh, your start training and, and all this, and then after that you uh, you became a, a personal trainer. I got, I know that because there was a couple uh, games interviews that you you kind of went through your bio on the, yeah. on the on the games website a, a few times. So. Yep. Yep. Got the got a job as just a personal trainer kind of doing that thing and then found uh crossfit on a lucky google search and then your first workout was fran yeah <laughs> and it took no you, way i looked at I, I saw this it said tell me if this is right because i'm taking it from the the crossfit games website you said that the first time it took you 13 minutes and 42 seconds yep <laughs> Jesus. 
Yeah, bro. I uh, I actually I found I found the CrossFit because uh, I had one of my more fit clients that I was training personally. I saw her in the gym the next day, and she was like, you know, on the treadmill, kind of warming up, and went over and said hi. And I said, hey, how was yesterday's workout? And she's like, well, I kind of thought it was uh, it was kind of easy. And I was like, what? I like kind of took it as like a sort of a constructive slap in the face. I'm like, easy. I'm like. All right. So basically she didn't get what she was looking for, you know? So I went home and kind of did some research and found CrossFit.com. And at that time it was like four or five spots down on Google search. It was an old school website. And uh, I just started poking around on that. And the very next workout was Fran and I didn't know what a thruster was. So I had to like Google that or go into like the archives for like movement and figured out it was like a front squat to a push press. And I go, okay, I can do that. And then strict, and then it was pull-ups. I just thought it was strict. So I had no idea what kipping was. I had no idea about any of that. And uh, took me like 13 minutes and some change. And I was like, completely wrecked. Like, <laughs> just, I, I like, the thrusters were terrible, probably pressing way too soon. You know, just like, uh, getting after it. The bar is off the yeah. shoulders. Dude, it was bad. But it was, um, I don't know, you just fell in, I just fell in love with it right from the get-go. It was just something I've never had before experienced. And uh, it almost felt like a little bit of football-esque, you know, like, okay, I'm training for something. And the, in, the intensity was there. Because before that, it was just your typical upper body, lower body days, you know? Can you explain what year was that in? Sorry, yeah, go ahead. That probably would have been... 2000, nah, 2008, 2009. Okay, cool. What's your friend there. time now? Best ever, probably not current, but best ever was, uh, I think I was around 240 or something like that, 242. 240. Explain, uh, explain a little bit to someone who maybe doesn't understand that mindset. We all, I think the four of us can agree that we're, uh, we're similar mindsets where we have uh, – I don't know what, what the word I'm looking for. There's a word to describe it where you're almost looking for the pain. Like you're just, you just described a workout that put you on the floor and you're like, you know, rolling around in pain and you're like, I need to do more of this. Like Someone else might be listening to this and they're like, that's the opposite of what I want. You know, like, why is that such a good thing? Like, or why did you think at the time, like that was what you're looking for? Like what makes you, what's, what gives you that mindset and, and why was CrossFit the, the way to go? Um, I think probably just from past experiences, you know, like I grew up playing football. So like, you know, the, the stuff that we would do would not only tax us physically, but also mentally, you know? And so being able to get that taste of the mental toughness and the mental fortitude from actual exercise was kind of a cool concept that I didn't really think of you know for me exercise before that was like aesthetics like okay I want to you know look a certain way or and I wouldn't really get too far out of my comfort zone you know yeah. with uh, the mental the mental side of it so for me I think that was what kind of drew, drew me to CrossFit it was like that mental game that you play with yourself inside workouts I think we've all been there, right? Where you're like, oh, crap, I can't do another rep. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Oh, my gosh. Like, what the heck is going on, you know, inside my head? Um, and so I think that was something that was new to me, and I've, I, I, I freaking loved it. Did you, you tell that story of your first friend when you talk about uh, expanding the margins of your experience and uh, what a CrossFit lecture? I have not. I have not yet. I have not done you that. You should. That's a perfect scenario. That, yeah, that's yeah, a great that's story. Good. That's a great story. Yeah. Where'd you play football? So two years at a junior college back home in Reading at Shasta Community College. And then I transferred up to Southern Oregon University, which is like D3 NAI football. Cool. And uh, finished two years up there. What position? I played middle linebacker. Oh. Freaking love it, baby. I would be scared to see Austin coming down on me with the, uh, with the ball. It was fun. But the kind of thing that sort of as – because I that would have been like 2008 was my last year, my senior year, I think. And uh, the offense just started to change, right? So everyone just went spread and everybody just kind of um, passed the ball a lot more. There wasn't a lot of downhill runs, a lot of like iso zone reads and all this stuff. So the game has sort of oh, yeah, evolved yeah. and changed. 
<laughs> Reza, right. probably, Reza probably knows more about what you're talking about than we do. We're not. You guys are hockey. Yeah, PT and I play hockey, but yeah, it's downhill. Okay. Isn't a, it played on a flat field? <laughs> <laughs> I so I so <laughs> yeah. what? Don't worry about it. When did you uh, open your affiliate? So I started helping out in 2000, 2009, I think October of two thousand nine. 2009. So you were at the 10 year affiliate gathering, were you? Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, last year up at Whistler. Yeah. That's awesome. Did you drive yeah. up? It's not far from you. No, it would have been about, it would have been about 10 hour drives. So okay. We, we flying. Yeah. We ended up flying. We, we could have pulled it off, but. So, we so Austin, you're talking, you're, you're talking to three guys who want a gym together and you're, you're, you did it all by yourself. Why? Um, well, at first, I didn't do it all by myself, to be honest. I had a business partner who okay. actually started the affiliate before I had it, or before oh, I okay. had it. So um, Lou Crenshaw, she was the one that started it. She was back in the day with Mark Ripito when Jeff Tucker um, was doing the gymnastic stuff. He still is, but, you know, he coached him a lot more. And uh, so she was around for, for the early, early CrossFit years. Um, so I just – you know, I was doing my thing in, in, the, in the Globo gym thing, doing my own CrossFit workouts. And then somebody came up to me and said, hey, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm doing CrossFit. She's like, well, you know, there's a CrossFit gym in town. I was like, what do you mean a CrossFit gym in town? Like, it's, it's online. You just, it's just the main site. She's like, no, there's affiliates, like small gyms off of it. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I built up the courage and sh shot her over an email. And usually, like, you know, it was like two months later, you know, it's like, took me a while to build up the courage to, to send out something. And um, she met me, we, she showed me her space and we kind of just started to slowly cultivate kind of naturally a, um, a business together. It was, you know, we obviously was around fitness. She was doing the CrossFit thing and I had more of the personal training side of stuff. And I just basically took about 30 of my members and transplanted them over into her facility. And how that slowly evolved was I was just doing personal training, doing CrossFit with them. And I just sort of foreshadowed what could eventually happen on my end was they're paying me personal training rates, but they could just basically pay the gym that we're already training in, you know, let's say 150 bucks, but they would get an unlimited membership. So thinking ahead, I was kind of like, okay, well, this isn't going to value them the best this isn't what's best for my clients even though it's probably not what's best for me but i took a risk and i just said hey lou if i get these personal training clients to slowly adapt into memberships would you give me a percentage of your of your business and she said absolutely she actually was sort of looking for some help and it just slowly started to evolve into what it is or you know what it's what it is today you know um why i did the run it by myself versus with a partner um well when did she leave is she still there so no she ended up i ended up buying her out in 2012 okay so she ended up kind of just getting burnt out and wanted to go do some her own thing so we agreed on a cost for the other 50 percent of the business and i just basically was making monthly payments to her over you know the course of a year and a half two years and so by 2012 it was mine and um, yeah. yeah, so it's been, it's been obviously entrepreneurship and running a gym is, there's a lot of awesome things, right? And there's also a lot of difficult and challenging things as well. And um, for me, like having a good support system, like my wife does a lot of the back end stuff. Um, she does, so that's a huge weight off my shoulders. Um, and then I kind of run more of the front end stuff. So I run like I'm on the floor a little bit. I'm running the coaches, uh, doing the programming and just kind of running that side. So I can't say that I do it by myself. Obviously, my wife is a big key piece to that. But, yeah, I don't have any like partnerships with anybody. And you know? um, so do you have a gym manager then? Because you travel on the weekends. You know, you, you go you go on the weekends and work seminars. So who's running the gym when you're gone? Yeah, so we do have like sort of some hierarchy set up. So we have like our operations manager that runs, helps Annie with the back end and does more of the face to face, like memberships, setups, you know, holds, all that stuff. She kind of is, you know, more versed in the back end of our operating system. 
And then um, I basically kind of do my best with, you know, facilitating the coaches on the fly. So we basically kind of sort of have a set schedule. Um, open lines of communication is, is very key for success. So just being able to say, hey, you know, we've got our month laid out, but how are things going? How are things doing? And we've uh, switched to programming out for six weeks now. So we do a six week block. And, um, you know, we've changed some things up with, with our vision on like programming and, and made some small tweaks and changes along the way over obviously the 10 years we've been doing it. So what's, uh, what are you in right now? Aside from the at home workouts, like what's your, uh, what's your, what's your vision for the, for the programming? So um, CrossFit's amazing and the community behind CrossFit is, it, there's like nothing, nothing can compare to it. Our members have been super supportive through these crazy times. But um, on a scale of like what we're kind of moving towards, I kind of wanted to give the gym sort of more of an identity. And this probably should have happened when I bought it in 2012 and it was completely mine. But I didn't do it until probably six months ago. And I gave ourselves some core values, some like things that I wanted our characteristics that I wanted our gym and our gym family to sort of take on. and use not only in the gym but also how it can transfer over into like life and skills that people might be going through outside of the gym so we just basically came up with some six like criteria that characteristics that we feel have kind of been beneficial so like for instance we kind of came up with the it's called the den method and uh the first one's fortitude then there's integrity vulnerability confidence tenacity and then at the top is power. And so out of those six, um, you know, those core traits can play out in a practical setting in the gym where like fortitude would be something for people to like limit excuses. Uh, it could be like strength of character, spirit, firmness, and like purpose. It was like kind of like that underlining fortitude message. So for us, how does that play out in our programming? Well, we would do, for, say we wanted to focus for the six weeks on fortitude being the stronghold of that six week block is we would do a lot more like carries and holds. So we're doing sandbag holds, farmer carries, L sits, you know, where we're kind of create a stronger structure, I guess you could say. And then you kind of adapt off of that. So then we can maybe take it into the next theory, which would be like integrity you know, of like failure versus losing, you know, or failure versus like winning, you know, it's like, you know, understanding that and being true to yourself. And so we just kind of like started to basically, I wanted to give the gym an identity. Yes, we are a CrossFit gym, but we are also more than that. And, um, you know, the stuff that we do inside the gym should play out and carry over into what you guys are doing in life. And so we felt like that was important. And I want to do it to address that. So we've been slowly working on putting that together over the last, I don't know, three to four months or so. That's really and cool. This happened. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been good for us. It's been like almost allowed me to find just more excitement about programming. You know, I felt like I would do in a couple of week blocks and there wasn't really like any sort of like rhyme or reason outside of, okay, well, we haven't really done this stuff in the last two or three weeks. It's like, okay, that's, that's an okay way to program. But like we felt, and you know, talking with some of my coaches and our team, it's like, okay, let's do a six week block. Let's do like a bigger focus. Let's give it a characteristic. Let's see how that plays into actual exercise and, and stuff like that and just roll with that. And it's been great. It's like, you know, being transparent with our members is also almost made them buy into the programming more, you know, because they have an understanding of like, oh, this is why Austin's making me do another 200 meter farmer carry. You know what I mean? Versus like, go do this. It's like, yeah, there's yeah. a bigger picture. We're going to retest at the end of these six weeks. Here's why, here's what we're doing. And so it just, it's allowed them to buy in more and create more, it, almost more ownership for themselves. So you've communicated your, your planning and your vision for each six weeks when you start it with your members. Right, so you exactly. can see. Yeah, yeah. Just giving them an understanding. So we'll do like a little video that we post out 
usually weekly or definitely before the six week blocks about to hit. So we're getting ready to redo. So, well, we've obviously had a little bit of a hiccup over the last three or four weeks. It was like right in the middle of our, our fortitude um, six week block. So, um, but we're getting ready to redo another one here soon. So that's really cool. It sounds like, like I've never, I don't know if I've ever heard that approach before your core values. Like it, it's almost, you know, like they, they have the words and your values have definitions, but it's almost like, it's almost, you're taking like these abstract ideas and you're turning them into programming, which yeah. is really, really interesting. And it kind of reminds me actually of like, uh, when I read Dave Castro's book, he talks a lot about how he gets inspiration from his workouts, from a lot of the books he reads and stuff. And I never, I never really understood that. I was always like, how do you get inspiration for workouts from, from books that you're reading and, you know, take like these abstract ideas and stories and turn it into a, a workout or a program. But yeah. you're, just, you're doing that right there. Kind of it's, it's cool. Yeah. You know, and like for another example on our pillar is confidence. Like we want our members to be confident and, uh, you know, for us, how that plays out application wise in our programming would be, we think, we think of them as like wins. So for us, like EMOMs, you know, developing an EMOM where it's, those are more designed for people to be victorious. Um, we don't want them to create an EMOM where it's in which for those that are listening, like every minute on the minute is basically what an EMOM is. Most of you guys probably know that, but just for those that don't. And so like creating those wins, um, and having our athletes be victorious in EMOMs. Yes, it should be challenging. But we also don't want you to pick a pace or have a rep scheme that's so high in that minute that you can't finish that. That's not what we're looking for. Um, and then also we throw in a little bit of bodybuilding, you know, in that sense too, like bicep curls or, you know, just some, some simple accessory stuff to help them feel more confident and, and also just target some weaker areas for some of our members. So it's just, yeah, it's been, it's been a cool little process to kind of sit back and um, I, I kind of want to hear like examples of everything. Like what yeah. do you do for integrity? So integrity, um, basically that kind of plays out as like honesty, undivided, sort of like state of being whole. So how that appl applicates into programming would be um, failure or, or being okay to lose. And so for that, it's like muscle failure. So it's like not, um, not having a set number in place not having like, I feel like CrossFitters over the years have gotten really good at pacing, right? So it's like, okay, I'm gonna go out, I'm not gonna hit true muscle failure because if I do, my performance is gonna go down, right? In a sense of like my time. Mm -hmm. And so CrossFitters have gotten really good at understanding their pace. Okay, I'm only gonna go 15 thrusters, I'm gonna put the bar down, shake out real quick, I'm gonna do another six, you know, so I keep my pace. And so for us, when we program for integrity, we program for muscle failure. So we might have them do one or two sets of bench press till failure, right? Or, um, you know, to where you just can't physically do another repetition. And for me, like, that's, I don't know about you guys, but like, that's total headspace. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I'm probably going to quit before my body tells me you're done, right? Like, I'm going to be like, oh, I'm done. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I can't finish it. Hey, you're like, not actually going to drop the bar on your chest. No, you're not physically going to yeah. be like, duh, duh. I mean, some might, but most people are going to be like, they're, they're quitting two or three reps. So muscle failure, great for the body, but also for the mental you know, aspect of it. Do you do, uh, do, do, you do death buys? Do you do death buys yeah. for that? Yep. Death buys are great. Um, anything that's going to put people into to losing. You know, I feel like people sometimes, like we, we want to teach our athletes how to win grace, gracefully. We all also want to be okay with, it's, it's okay to fail. Like, you know, you're not a, you're not um, less than because you can't, you know, you, you, your body gives out, right? And so it's just good for us to learn both sides of that. The next one usually, um, and you can kind of put these sort of wherever on the, on the spectrum of our six characteristics, but vulnerability is, a, is another good one that we like to use. It's what we wanted to put on ours. And so it's uh, exposure and humility. So how that plays out program wise would be like learning new things. So new skills like gymnastics and typically Olympic weightlifting are going to be the two where we program for vulnerability because they're, they're challenging. Most people don't have a muscle up or let alone a really solid handstand pushup or a regular pushup. So 
usually when we're programming for vulnerability, we're programming, we're thinking new skills, handstand walks, you know, learning the different poles in the Olympic lifting, um, just kind of, kind of that aspect when we're programming for vulnerability. We talked a little bit about confidence already, already. So that's like EMOMs and wins and bodybuilding. Um, tenacity. So it's almost like taking the clock out of the equation. Like we're not, you're not doing some, some task priority workouts necessarily in the confidence. You just, you yeah. kind of don't want people to be competing against others basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's about you finding, you know, what you're capable of and, um, making sure that it's a challenge but yet you're not falling behind you're you know, winning to feel like you can find a, a, a steady amount of work and be able to maintain that for a, a, an extended period of time and not feel like you have to fall off you're charlie what inspired you're charlie you to do this? <laughs> what inspired you to do this um honestly i just felt like i uh wanted to give the gym um like core values, right? And, and um, characteristics for us to kind of start to take ownership of and give the gym an identity almost. It's like, yeah, we're mm -hmm. CrossFit the den, right? And like I said earlier, like this probably should have been done when I bought the gym and it was mine completely. Like this should have happened in 2012. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why I, I waited 10 years to give the gym core values. Like that's not good business counsel. If, if somebody was asking me, I'm, I'm going to open a gym, what should I do? Like, well, you obviously need to make sure you know how to do some accounting, but also like start with some core values. Like, what do you believe in? What do you, what do you want your members to believe in? What are they, where's your buy-in at? And I mean, we didn't have that. Right. And so that was, you know, a big piece of it, you know? Yeah. That I understand. And, and, you know, you want your mission statement you want your, your values to be clear for you and your employees, but why the, um, what inspired you to take those values that are just seen in everyday life and, mm -hmm. and it, apply it to specifically workouts or programming? Like that's, that's, to me, that's super original. You yeah, know, I've, I've never, yeah. it's very unique, right? So I, I, you, you may have thought of this yourself, but has, does anybody else do this? Like I, you know, we talked to a lot of people on level one staff, like is, did someone give you that idea or were you inspired by someone there? Yeah. So basically we sat down, um, Someone who helped me with this, Sarah Lugman, she um, owns Point One Vision. Um, she's been to the games multiple times. Um, she's kind of competed on CrossFit Invictus's teams back in the day. Uh, I would say like 2013, 14, somewhere around there. Um, and we sat down and I was just like, I feel like I want a little change in the gym. And so we just started She's like, well, what are your core values? And I was like, oh, shit, I don't know. You know, like, uh, so we just started with those. And um, she totally is super visionary. And she kind of helped put some of these things in place. And then we're like, okay, well, like, because I just got bored with the programming a little bit. I just wanted to change. And so how could those characteristics play out in actual fitness, right? And, and what we want to try to get accomplished with our members. Um, it just sort of happened organically. And obviously Sarah was a big part in that and helping um, kind of put things into place and shining light on, okay, well, you know, wh what are these, how do these core values play out in a CrossFit facility? And so we just kind of looked at all the different ways that we can approach workouts and it just sort of, yeah, I, I, it just sort of happened. It literally was like one of those things. We sat down at the kitchen table and in like two hours, this was like, it just, it just happened. Like I, it wasn't, it was effortless. It just sort of all unfolded really quickly. And, um, you know, I can't take all the credit. Obviously Sarah was a big part in, um, you know, opening this up and, you know, giving me some, um, insight on how the den method could look and how we can, you know, start to program differently, but yet still keep it obviously CrossFit because CrossFit's awesome. And I'll, I'll always, you know, always, believe in what coach believes in and Dave and all the amazing, you know, people that have come before us. So yeah, it just honestly just happened natural. Pete, uh, or Paul. Awesome. Yeah. It's That's, just, um, do, you, do you think that there's like, um, uh, there's a, a, a timing or a certain amount of years of being in business that makes you kind of want to reinvent yourself or, or change the gym a little bit, you know, like, 
did you feel like you were, you said you got bored of programming, but was that the only thing that you were bored with or, you know, did you feel like you needed to change something big? Is that why? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, I think as, to be honest, I think, you know, you've been, you've been doing this for 10 plus years and, uh, there were some good years for sure. Right. Where, you know, I kind of felt like I just was on cruise control. You know, I just was like, membership is good. Coaches are good. And I just was kind of like on coast mode. And, um, 2019 came around and I told Annie, I said, I, I'm tired of coasting. Like I, I, I feel like I, I either want to get after it and push a little bit more. And I just feel like I was, I was over, I don't know, that season of my life was, I was ready for a change. And um, so 2019 was a big year. Um, we had a lot of change happen in 2019. Uh, we ended up buying another location in Ashland, which was about 20 minutes away from us and started to run a second location, um, brought in, bringing more, you know, more coaches on staff. And um, we've learned a lot. Um, we've learned a lot in the last you know, year or so. And so, yeah, I think it was just the season, Paul, you know, and yeah. being ready, just, you know, so you always own two wanting. affiliates then. Yeah. So I, I ended up selling that in January. Okay. This was, I wasn't, uh, I don't think I was fully ready for it, you know, to take some ownership of it. Uh, running one location really well is a challenge, at least for me, um, especially with family and other, um, other, other priorities, other things I want to do too with my life, you know? Yeah. It, it was, uh, it was, it was tough. And so Cause you're, um, you're a dad, right? You're a dad. You have two kids. Yeah. Two kids, uh, probably a little bit older than yours, uh, six and f almost four. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're just two, you're basically two years in, in front of me. Yeah. It gets better, buddy. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good so far. I see some um, of the PT sto uh, Instagram stories. It looks pretty fun to me. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It's great. It's can be exhausting obviously but it's fun so did you find that the with the second location you're like what was that cutting into family time and stuff like that or yeah I just yeah it was you know family time adding you know a little more stress on both of us because Annie's doing the back end now for two locations and yeah. I'm trying on the front end and stuff so yeah definitely some family time and you know at, and um yeah, it's just, it's just hard. You know, you, you definitely, you guys know how it feels to, um, you know, put in the effort and the time it takes. Sorry, it's a little windy out here. That's okay. Um, but yeah, it's just um, something kind of, I wanted to, I don't know, when the opportunity came early 2019, I was like, yeah, this is going to be great. And I've always wanted to run to two gyms, have two locations, you know, and kind of taken over and, you know, and then you kind of get your feet in there and you're kind of like, oh, this isn't as great as I sort of thought it might have been. And, you know, you just, you just you kind of get, kind of get punched around a little bit. And yeah, it was a great learning experience. You know, I'm glad that we, we, we took, we took the risk and we've, we learned some things and uh, we've grown from it. And um, I've, yeah, it's, it's, it's much better now that we just have one location. We are yeah. we're happy to just focus on one. And, and, and now I can, you know, when you're not necessarily having to work in the business and having two locations, you can now start to do stuff like, okay, I'm going to work on the business. Right? Like I can now maybe take a look at writing up some core values for the den, you know, and the den method and giving that some purpose and some structure and some organization, you know? So it's allowed me to still coach some classes and be in the part of the, on the floor, but then also have some time to sort of work on the business, um, which is important, you know. You probably realized that you had, when you got the second gym, that you still had a lot of time. You have a lot of time to, to give to something. So why not just give it to your existing gym and make that even better? Exactly. Right? Yeah, 100%. Awesome. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like, you know, the, the change, I mean, just from the tone in your voice and stuff is going pretty well, but it wants you it, tell us like, what's the experience been like? Like, uh, how have you seen uh, change kind of unfold in your gym with this new mindset, these core values, you know, how you're, how you're programming for the gym? Like what kind of positive impact has that had on the gym? 
Yeah, so I think when you have two locations, you're kind of, especially if the new one, I was spending more time there, right? So I just wanted to make sure that that was running and that was flourishing and everything down at that south location um, was, was being handled. So I ended up spending more time at the second, lo the newer second location. So the people from the first location got, you know, a little, um, not irritated, they understood. But, you know, they're like, well, it'd be nice to see you guys, you around a little bit more, you know, yeah. And which, you know, is understandable, right? I, I try to take it as a compliment, you know, it's like, I appreciate that, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd love to be able to spend some more time, you know, so just trying to be transparent with that. Um, programming wise with the new changes for, for one, I said earlier, it's like almost kind of lit me on fire again. And there's like some purpose to and some organization to how we're structuring and what we're working on. And, you know, we are taking a little bit of a step back on it being so much about performance, um, you know, and more of a general health, you know, how, I think. That, how are the, how are the members responding to that? They're like, I, I get the sense that you guys as coaches and you, you know, you're really embracing the change, but ultimately obviously it's for the members, right? Like, are they really loving it? It's, it's kind of cool because, you know, these, uh, these qualities that you've outlined, like, I mean, everyone can relate to those things. Everyone's looking at them. They're like, and it's not just about fitness anymore. It's about like almost being a good person. You know, I just like, I wrote a couple of them down and most people will look at those qualities and they're like, I want integrity. I want confidence, you know? So are they kind of taking these six week blocks in stride and like, really embracing what you're putting out there in terms of, you know, the theme and, 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 you know, you, you see members in the corner being like, this is going to give me integrity. Like, is that kind of the vibe you guys have now or? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it just plays out for most people. It's like, they're still coming in there because it's fitness related, you know, right. and I think it's, it's still early for us. So I think, you know, we're hopefully going to see that unfold later on, but as of right now, they're just, they are liking, the fact that we're taking a little bit more time and there's a more purpose behind what we're doing and the theme kind of plays out. And it's not like we're just slamming it in their faces. It's, it's still CrossFit. Like we're just trying to create a balanced six week program using those six criteria and just making sure that it's balanced. And then we are overemphasizing a little bit of that week. So if let's say vulnerability is our focus um, coming up in this next six week chunk, we're going to play around with having some more gymnastics or maybe a little more Olympic weightlifting. You'll see that theme play out through those next six weeks more frequently. I think for them, just understanding why they're seeing all this mm. allows them to have more buy-in, you know, whether I think, yeah, I'm doing more Olympic weightlifting. So now I'm going to be more vulnerable. Like, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily yeah. <laughs> a trait that, that is being played out. Right. But yeah. at least that's our purpose, right? And they have a, yeah. a bigger understanding if they want to fall back on it, you know, but they're not toting the old vulnerability card, you know, as they come into the gym for this week. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was kind of <laughs> wondering, though, because, uh, I mean, you, you know, you, you, talk, you talk about it like it's, um, you know, like it's something that you put out there to your members and, and it's like this major sort of change, but it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it's more of a subtle change that over time it's going to start to stick its roots in the ground and it'll become part of your identity. Like you said, your values. Yep, exactly. I, you know, so. I would, uh, I'd definitely finish a workout at your gym and be like, holy fuck, I'm, I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, I felt that. Totally. I'm exposed. I'm exposed. I, am exposed. Damn, I got fortitude today. I got a big glass of fortitude. Oh man. I love yeah, it. I think, I think that's cool. Well, how's the, um, so through all that, um, and, and COVID and the closures and everything, how long you've been closed for? So we, we tried to stay open. We stayed open as long as we could. Um, yeah. we stuck with every mandate. So the first mandate was like 25 people or less for the state of Oregon. And that lasted about a week, I think maybe a week and a half. And then they had the stay at home. They called it stay at home um mandate where obviously we certain businesses that were deemed non-essential um had to close and so when was that that would have been it was a tuesday i want to say two weeks so this coming tuesday would be um the start of the third week so oh wow um yeah it's been 
Where are we man. right now? Is that us too? We're, we're... We're, no, we're we're about to start week five on Monday. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, start, but you yeah. guys are – I mean, you guys are – I mean, New York, right? You guys are kind of in the thick of it. You guys are pretty close. They were, we're yeah. pretty close. But, I mean, BC is similar to you guys. Like, because you B, – BC had a lot of people coming up from Seattle. And you, you're in kind of the same situation there. Uh, BC, I don't know. I've I've heard rumors. I haven't really looked into it. The BC is kind of on – it's coming up to a, a head. And it's soon coming down on the other side of the – Yeah. Of the, the curve I, or whatever. But – I think our city just like kind of reacted pretty quick. So as soon as, as soon as the city shut down all non-essential city run facilities, we just followed suit with that. And they said they're going to be, those facilities are going to be closed until June 30th What? in, yeah. in Ottawa now. So based on our thought process to close, our thought process to reopen would, would be around there, which we hope not, but I, um, yeah. I, I'm intrigued with the, um, What's up, bud? I'm intrigued with the um, the restrictions that you had. So how, like, the 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 state said you couldn't be more than 25 people in the building at the, at once, or yeah, yeah. So we were you, still our some of our bigger classes, like in the evenings, would have been were close. Okay. Um, you know, so like would our, you does that count? Does that count like people coming in for the next class? Like, yeah. Would you have to stop people to be to be like we, no, warm up outside or whatever? Okay. We we didn't. We probably should have, but we right. we 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 didn't. I mean, it's happened so fast. Like, it's hard to friggin' yeah. know exactly what to do in that moment. But and our doors are open, and you know, we they've actually the gym has never been as clean as it's been. Yeah. I mean, our exactly. members were cleaning stuff down when we were still able to work out like before after oh, they're washing yeah. their hands like three times a day like just in the hour that they were there like there was you know hand sanitizers like on every corner it was just uh you know it's frustrating because grocery stores can be open which i understand people need to go get food right you know and that's sort of an essential piece to someone's quality of life you know but um i would have to say you know some of those grocery stores aren't as clean as some of our gyms around you know, they're not no. With the sand, with the with the amount of wipes and cleaning supplies, and the opportunity to go wash your hands on a frequent basis, like, you know, you keep your distance, you keep your couple mats between you, you're going to be fine. Yeah, uh, you know, it's. it's I think the I think the hope is that at some point we'll we'll be able to get back to something like that. Um, you yeah. know, where we're we're limiting the amount of people in or or, or whatever. We we've talked about when we go back maybe we're going to be doing some form of, you know, smaller group or even one-on-one -on -one training for a little bit, uh, you know, when the, the doors first open, maybe week one and then week two yeah. start to bring a couple more people in. But so it's, um, it's definitely been a bummer, right? But there's also some good that's come out of it too. If you want to look, you know, you can kind of try to look at both sides, you know, and I was talking to one of our members at the gym the other, well, what, three weeks ago or whatever. And she said, I'm just curious to see what people are going to take out of this mm -hmm. and take with them, right. As they move back into some normalcy, cause like, there's been some good stuff. Like, you know, I've been more, you know, we've been able to spend more time together as family. We've been able to be more um, intentional with our kids. Um, we've realized how awesome teachers are, <laughs> right? Like we're trying to teach our kids, you know, in their kindergarten is still kind of been a, a challenge, you know? So we just, you realize in the things that you take for granted, yeah. Um, but my question for our members and you guys too, it's like, well, what are you going to take with you as you come out of this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you running virtual classes or anything like that for your members? What are you doing? What are you doing now? Yeah, we got, we're just running two and then we're running, um, we about another six or seven more additional workouts that people can, can, uh, flip through, uh, for the week. So we've got two kettlebell workouts, two dumbbell workouts, uh, two barbell workouts, two gymnastics workouts, and then two recovery workouts. In addition to our oh, wow. daily, into it, in addition to our daily uh, Zoom classes that we also have. So that's happening each week. Oh, did really you cool. pause? Uh, did you pause all the memberships? I did not. Um, we've had about eleven or twelve people put their membership on hold. So when I talk <laughs> about supporting this, how amazing this CrossFit community is. I mean, it's awesome. I, I mean, I'm super humbled and grateful for people to continue to pay membership, um, even though 
their training has looked um, a lot different, you know? And did we you put, been, out you more, put out more content, but yeah. the face-to-face -face isn't there, right? Did you basically no. send out an email being like, guys, this is the situation. If you want to put your membership on hold, you can. And everyone's like, keep it on. Yeah. So we actually, we didn't say, we didn't really talk to him about like what changes were happening because it was just so like day to day. Yeah. Um, and so we've had people that have reached out um, and we are in no expectation of people paying for memberships right now. Like if, if they need to cancel or close because their hours have been cut in half or they lost their job, like 100%, like without question, like that is totally fine. Like, and mm -hmm. should probably happen. You need to take care of yourselves. I'm just hoping that, you know, this is for us, at least over here, that it's only going to last till hopefully the end of April. Mm -hmm. Are you, you finding, know? are you, uh, I mean, cause we're, we were talking to, to Matt DeBrook yesterday and, uh, Got you! yeah, Doobie. Doobie. And, uh, we were, we were talking about just what you were saying, how there's a lot of opportunity that can come from this. And, especially and more specifically with the virtual classes and the virtual CrossFit memberships that people are, are offering. Are you, are you going down that road? Are you thinking about creating a, an opportunity for people to start doing CrossFit online and, and, you know, maximizing your time away from the gym and maybe creating another business opportunity for yourself? Yeah. I mean, that thought has definitely crossed my mind. It's definitely not what drives me. Um, I, I obviously prefer the connection and the, you know, that gym atmosphere. Um, but is there an opportunity there to sort of um, capture potentially? You know, I don't know what that looks like. You see a lot of online programs that were even starting to pop up before this happened. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, to name a few, you got, you know, Miranda, street parking. She's killing it. She's doing great, putting out a bunch of good stuff. Uh, your old Dave Libson, you know, taking the old bodybuilding <laughs> by storm, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, what a lunatic. <laughs> 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 did, did you see, did you see, uh, Annie Thor's daughter, what she put out, like basically when this all started, yeah, how did you see it? she has like, it looks like a Peloton. It's, it's a, a, it's, yeah. a, it, it looks like Peloton, like with the lights and she's in the screen, she got a little mic. She's got people working out and it's like the production value is out of this world. She's been working on it for like six months and the, the planned release was like around this time. Right. Yeah. So it's just like, it looks, it looks hilarious because everyone's tossing out these online programs and now <laughs> she's like, Oh yeah, watch this. Boom. Boom. It's <laughs> unreal. People are probably like, how does she make this happen in a week? That's what I said. I was, I saw it. I didn't know she was up to this and I saw the yeah, program. Yeah. I saw a video and I said, what the hell? How did you put this I together? Have to look, I have to look this up. I got to see it. I haven't seen yeah, it. It's, it's pretty cool. So uh, you're stuck. You're on uh, HQ seminar staff, CrossFit yeah. HQ seminar staff. Um, you know, obviously you're a great coach. Some might say one of the best coaches in the world. I don't know about that. Um, I appreciate it what do you do you find it challenging to do these to coach these online classes yeah i mean i it's definitely it's been different you have to you have to be patient i don't know what struggles you guys have found but you know we'll usually start i'll get in there about 10 minutes early and just to kind of see if anyone wants to pop in early we can kind of chat and then um and then i usually wait five minutes to after the hour before we kind of start to get the ball rolling but yeah it's definitely um a lot more scale. You have to be completely prepared for more scaled options and equipment changes mm -hmm. right? or subs, right? You have to sub things out for certain things. So you're going to have to be kind of light on your toes and not really, you basically sort of take the structure timeline frame out of it. You just kind of go by who's popping on, right? Yeah. We saw like people are signing into classes, like they're registering for normal CrossFit, you know, daily class. So yeah. It's definitely been a little bit of a challenge. Uh, sometimes just setting your thing up and people's mics and things and all your, everyone's, <laughs> you know, <the> static. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's <laughs> breathing into their microphone. Yeah, like, yeah. Dude, <laughs> breathe so hard. Are you, are You're you coaching like a, a running workout and all you hear is the wind and everybody's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. 
are you uh are you learning like it's it's super limiting obviously like just sitting behind the screen like i'm sitting on my desk here i'm doing the the zoom class and like never in my life have i just sat in a chair looking at a screen to do my coaching like it's so it's so limiting it's crazy like are you finding your learning stuff about your your coaching or your coaching style like in a positive way like yeah i'm kind of i'm actively trying to look for ways that i can improve my coaching because i know that i can i could potentially take something from this and once we start going back into you know live one-on-one uh face-to-face classes i mean yeah absolutely i feel obviously your um your tactile cues are going to be going out the window right you can't be doing any tactile cues yeah <laughs> hit my hand right you know like you, you, you definitely <laughs> you're definitely having to be um obviously more visual with your with your with your um finding your faults and things of that nature um, and then verbal, obviously, with your communication. So for me, I was, I was always sort of that style of coach. Is I'm a visual kind of ta- like not so tactile, but verbal. And then um, you can uh, visually show them. So you know, you just it just takes some more time when you're you can't that cue and that fix isn't going to happen right away through, you know, your Zoom classes. Half the time they don't even know I'm talking to them. You know, I'm like, hey, hey, you, yo, Paul. <laughs> Push your knees out, Paul. Yeah. You know, like, huh? What'd you say? I'm like, oh gosh. Just keep going. You're doing great. Yeah. So and I mean, often, you're, you're like great. a. Yeah, and you're a big personality too. I, I, you know, I've seen you coach, and so how how do you find uh, like can you be yourself a little bit behind the screen, or is that tough for you? No, I mean I can. It's it's just gonna play out for how it how it will, right? You know, I I still like get in there and scream and like tell me go faster and high fives. And I still try to keep that energy. It's just coming through a screen, you know, yeah. and I'm not going to change who I am necessarily because it's a, you know, behind the screen or whatnot, but I still try to try to have that come out. Cause that's what people like. And they sometimes need that, you know, that push. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's definitely been, it hasn't as probably as, as challenging as I thought it was going to be, you know, coaching through zoom. Um, probably just more the technical side, like, you know, technology wise, like just getting it all sort of organized and everybody in there. And that sort of was more of a learning curve for me than it was like, Oh my gosh, like now, now I can't tactically cue somebody or, you know, it's just like, I, I think when I first started and we can maybe talk sort of about like lead this into coaching too, but um, I think when I first started, I felt like I had something to prove. You know, I felt like I, you know, needed to show everybody that I was a good coach and that I knew all my faults and that I can give these people what they want, you know, and I would just try to fix it all and just, you know, it was just trying to show them because I was insecure, right? I, that's basically what it came down to. I was insecure because I was a new coach, you know, even on HQ, I was still like, oh my gosh, I got to show everybody that this is what I want to do. And, you know, I, I have what it takes and it's just like, you know, now fast forward 10 years it's like i i don't have that same type of pressure you know i don't feel like i have something to prove i feel like i have a ton of value that i can help um benefit people and finding them like helping them where they currently are right not like oh gosh i gotta make them do this and get to this rep scheme and the pressure's on like i don't really feel any pressure anymore when i'm coaching which has been kind of nice you know like i feel like i'm i'm you know, here, I'm going to do the best job. Are there other coaches out there better than me? hundred percent. Like I, I, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to show up and I'm going to, you know, allow them to just enjoy the experience and then, you know, have them, you know, see, see, see what happens after that. You know, like, I just feel like I haven't, I don't have that pressure anymore. Like when I first started, I'm like, I got something to prove. You and know? it applies to the online classes. Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, I like, I'm gonna, we're gonna make the best of this, right? Is this ideal? No, it's not ideal, you know. But this is, it's gonna be the best Zoom class of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good, man. I think that's important to remember when you're teaching a Zoom class, is because you know, people are half the time, like you said, they're not gonna hear your cue, or like if they do hear it, they think it's at someone else or whatever, the friggin' mic cuts out and it's just not as like personal. But if you can be like yourself and a big personality and the reason they tune in is because they just wanna see your pretty face. Woo! You know, you know, and just get a little bit of Austin stack for the day. Like right. that's all they need, you know? 
that's why they're going to keep coming back and just, you know, have a good time. For sure. Awesome. You still, you still working out or what? Yeah. You know, not nearly like I was training for the games and regionals or the demo uh, team or demo team. Right. That's right. You're on the demo team a few times. Hey, Austin, how come you were only on the demo team one time asking for a friend? <laughs> I actually I was on twice and then I uh, I think Dave Castro threw me a bone for the third time where I think I was there for uh I was demoing the masters movements or the masters workouts. So I was yeah, twice. That, I made it twice. That was uh that, that was, was the year where we were together in 2015 with yeah. Matt Chan and uh, Zach Forrest. Man, did we ever have a good time. Yeah, oh my gosh, that was... Holy crap. I actually pulled up, uh, I came across a couple old videos. I should send them your way. We were in the back, like, just completely goofing off, like, not doing what we were supposed to be doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that the one where we tried to fill uh, Zach's mouth with uh, <laughs> ketchup? <laughs> what? I don't remember. Were but I do remember oh. that. I don't think, I don't have video of that. It was the one oh, where you would, you would walk like this. You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when you guys, yeah, like you know, a little waddle. That's how. Yeah, that's just how I walk. Yeah, like no, you, no. Walk, you walk like you're wearing ice skates, bro. I know. <laughs> hey, and you, you actually, you were on the demo team in 2014, and I remember this very specifically. Well, maybe not that specifically. When I think about it, unless you correct me, did you you demoed the push pull? Yeah, with the handstands? Yes, you demoed that, and, and Dave made you do the whole workout in front of us, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. That was, and yeah. You, you, you smashed it. Like, we watched you do it, and we were like, you're, you're obviously sick at handstand push-ups. Like, <laughs> everyone watched you do it, and we're like, oh, my God, this guy is smashing it. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I was super nervous. Dave told me he was only going to have me do the first round. Of course. And yeah. then he's like, you want to keep them going? Let's go, guys. Keep them going. <laughs> He's clapping. No, Dave, no, please. It was crap. He made me do the whole damn thing. And I think I actually went back and tried to find my time because somebody videotaped it from the crowd. And I tried to see, like, how fast I actually did it. And then I tried to compare myself to, I think, Rich or Ryan. Like, there was a battle back and forth for that. I don't know. Bridges and, and Rich. Yeah, Rich. that's what yeah. it was. Uh, PT, you what play, PT, you came fifth in that? Yeah, I finished fifth in that one. I, was, yeah. I wasn't in the last seat, but, uh, yeah, I, I did fifth. A that was a big finish. moment in the, in the crowds when we were watching you. Like, I remember that was – it was nighttime. It was, it was exciting. Yeah, it was <laughs> under the lights. You know, you, I, I won my heat under the lights in the tennis yeah. stadium. Pretty there's cool moment. nothing yeah. like that, bro. In that tennis nothing. stadium, there's nothing like that. I know. It, it's Like, the, the Coliseum has its own feel, but, man – Friday night in the tennis stadium. Yeah. I got one experience um, from 2012. I was in Jason Kalipa's heat and it was another handstand push up workout. And was that the med, the med ball? D ball, yeah. right? And right, right. Jason was like, you know, like a lap ahead of me, right? Just killing it. And he kept yeah, failing right. on his last handstand push up. And he did. And I was on the other end of the stadium throwing the damn ball around. And he finally gets his last handstand push-up. And the crowd, like, screamed so loud. I've never, out of any, like, sporting event I've ever been to or played in, ever felt anything like that before in my life. Like, I literally could just, it's like, it was nuts. Hair was standing yeah. up in my head. I was like, let's freaking go. I got to go fast. Like, just like, yeah. you <laughs> out-of-body experience. It was like, yeah. it was unbelievable. That's like, crazy. He, like, aren't you, you're, you made it right, but you qualified. I qualified, but unfortunately, COVID put a little damper on that whole situation. So, like, so well, yeah. have you heard about it? Like, well, do we know no, if we don't know anything. But I mean, you can only you can only assume based on the situation in the states. And like, I don't know, the the freaking Olympics are are like canceled and shit. So I I don't know. We'll see what happens. Dave, I heard on a podcast, Dave said that he was going to like release news, uh, you know, pretty soon because there's a deadline coming up for that or whatever. I'm sure with like renting the space, they got to come up with if they're going to cancel it by a certain time. But I hope they don't. Oh, man, me, me too. Me too. I want to throw you a few no reps, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many times have you judged at the games? Twice. Twice. Okay, same yeah, with me. Yeah, I basically, um, 
I've, I've, I've kind of seen the games from every perspective. Almost. Yeah, I was going to say, that's cool. I got demoed it. I've, I've been a spectator. I was a competitor. I was judge. Um, yeah, it's been. What's the, what's the best one? Uh, competitor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Demo, yeah, teams, yeah. Dem demo team's a close second. Yeah. Or I guess a close first. I so mean, you just, you fun. can't, if you're not competing, you cannot help but think about and watch the workouts and think about doing them yourself and what you would be getting if you did the workout. Like yeah. even, even judging, I'm judging and I'm doing my job, but before and after the workout's over, I'm thinking to myself, what would I get if I did this workout? I'd beat that guy, that guy, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're trying to pick it out. Yeah. But the well, thing about you guys it, you don't realize is like it's a full it's like the weekend so like not only do the workouts wear on you it's the going to and from it's the stress it's the ups yeah. and the downs it's like like they've done so much work by the time they get to that 11th 12th event you know it's yeah like, yeah i could probably beat them but they've also done 12 other workouts before they that's got right. there that's right you know? like just put that in perspective these guys are amazing yeah. these and gals are amazing amazing athletes yeah. What were you going to say, PT? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. All right. Oh, you – no, well, you guys um, – I don't know if Austin did this with you, but you, you would tell me you would judge all day, and then the, at night with Doobie, you guys would do the day's events in the warm-up area. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's what we did. That's what we did for a good chunk – of the days at the beginning like we did the first cut we did the second cut we did i think we got on the instead of the ruck run we got on the roller for a 5k row stuff like that you know yeah so yeah. we uh we tried to chip away at all the events it was really fun the sled instead of the sled sprint we did the bar muscle ups but there were a bunch of worms and sandbags around so we did carries did sandbag carries down the the warm-up area and back that was really right. fun yeah, cool. yeah that was fun well austin that was a great combo man we've been talking for an hour can you believe it dude not even it feels like 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> well we'll let well, you we'll let you go enjoy your family man thanks yeah. man happy easter guys happy you easter guys to evening, you. let me know thanks for having me on i really appreciate it nice absolutely. meeting you that was, that was yeah, awesome. you too, rest. absolutely man see Talk you guys to you soon. Good, bud.